So I had to come back a second day because the spot is perfect and I wanted to get some better pictures. Oh man! Hey what's up everybody! In this video we'll go through the whole process I went through to go from finding this perfect spot and turning it into a 3D model by using a camera and my drone. Let's go! So it all started with a goal to find some rock textures to test a blender out on that I previously reviewed in a video. And while I was walking around near the lakeshore, I stumbled upon this tunnel with two big no entry signs. I think this tunnel will be a very good game asset actually. Let me know in the comments in which game you would see it. So I set up my camera and drone to take a few shots and lucky for me the tunnel was a bit hidden and far from people walking around. So I was able to take my time without being bothered or bothering anybody. That day was perfect for this kind of project. A cloudy weather makes photogrammetry easier by not casting hard shadows on our potential model. Now I'm using the DJI Mini 5 Pro for this project. This video is not sponsored, so if you're interested in the gear I use, I have them listed in the description down below. And if you use the links to make a purchase, I make a small commission and it helps the channel. What I'm doing here is called photogrammetry. And to do this, you need to take pictures of every angle possible of your subject. But you also need to set your camera to some specific settings. First, you want to set your exposure manually. This will make sure your pictures all have the same colors instead of having the white balance and the other settings constantly shifting as you move. Next, if you're using a drone like I do, you'll want to set it to photo and use the time shot option with an interval of 5 seconds. Make sure you have the output set to raw and you're good to go. All you have to do now is slowly fly around your subject and get every angle possible just like I did. Or I thought I did. You'll see what I mean soon. Time to go back and see how good the data set is. While I'm walking back home, take the time to subscribe to the channel. I'll be making similar content in the future. Now that we're back, a good measure is to go in Adobe Lightroom or any similar software and adjust the color of our pictures. This is why it was important to use raw format. Raise the exposure a bit, lower the highlights, raise the shadows and the whites. Copy your edit settings and apply them to all the pictures. If you had a shift of sunlight intensity during your shoot like I did, you might have to adjust them individually. But I think this will do for now. Export them to a separate folder and load up Reality Scan. If you don't have Reality Scan already, download the Epic Game Launcher and go to the Reality Scan tab to download the latest version. Once Reality Scan is loaded, simply drag and drop your pictures, go to the Alignment tab and click Align Images. After a few seconds, the aligning process will be done. This will take every picture you have and convert them into cameras that project your model. And you'll get this very cool result that shows every location where your drone took the pictures. Now time to go to the Mesh Model tab and click on Set Reconstruction Region. This will make sure you create only the part of the model that you need. After that, it's time to create the mesh. I suggest by starting with the normal details. Usually this is enough. But if your model doesn't look good, you can try high detail which will take way more time to process and sometimes you don't get better results. When the process of creating the mesh is done, it'll look like it snowed all over it. Don't worry, that's normal because there's one extra step before your model is done. Time to create the texture. Again in the Mesh Model tab, click on Texture. This will take a few minutes and once it's done, you'll be able to admire your creation. Look at the details of the rocks, the leaves, the water. The results are amazing, but uh, some other places like the fence and the bushes were not as good. Now, before exporting the model to Blender, there's something important I forgot to do when I was there with my drone. Let's go back and do something that will make our model even better. Alright, so I had to come back a second day because the spot is perfect and I wanted to get a better data set, some better pictures. Oh man! Now there's, there has been a lot of rain lately and yeah there's water flowing, this might be a problem for um, the photogrammetry but we'll give it a try anyways. Now 
I feel dumb saying this, but I forgot to use my mirrorless camera to take close-up pictures the first day I was there. So this time, not only did I take more pictures with the drone, but I also took close-up photos of the wall texture with my camera. I'm using the ZV-E10 by Sony, which is not the best choice for photogrammetry, but this is what I have and it'll do a better job than a phone camera anyways. Settings have to be set manually, just like we did with the drone at the beginning of the video. And don't forget to use a RAW format to color correct your photos accordingly. Back in reality scan, we can see that there's way more cameras and they're more concentrated where I use the ZV-E10. I could use the first photo shoot along with the second one. Unfortunately, the water coming out of the tunnel wasn't flowing at the same location and this might get us a weird looking model. So I'm just gonna use a second photo shoot dataset instead. There's a lot of settings we can use in reality scan to get a better model, but we'll only use a few in this video. Let's give high details a try and compare it to the normal details to see how it looks. We can see that the high detail model goes deeper inside the tunnel, but it's also four times bigger, going from 41 million to 164 million faces. So for the sake of keeping this video short, we'll only use the normal detail model from now on. Ok, now time to export this to Blender, but to do this we will simplify the model to a face count that's manageable. Let's bring it down from 41 million to 500,000 faces. When quickly comparing the two of them, the difference is barely noticeable, so this will be good enough. We can lower the face count even more in Blender if you want to. Time to export it now. Click on the Reality Scan logo on the upper left corner, Export, and use FBX. Make sure you select Blender in the Transformation preset. Alright, let's finally load up Blender and import our FBX model. Go into Material Preview and voila! Now you can clean it up a bit more and do whatever you want with it. Here I'll make a quick fluid simulation just as a demonstration with a radioactive Mountain Dew collar. But yeah, I'll explain how I did this in an upcoming video, so subscribe if you're interested. Now, if you stayed until the end of this video, I just want to say thank you. This is much appreciated. I started a Patreon page recently, so if you want to show support to the channel, this is a great way to do it. The link will be in the description. Thanks for watching. See ya.